Hey everybody, hi and welcome to the video. In this video, we are gonna see a hands-on lab for schema evolution in Apache Hori. That is correct, schema evolution. But before that, I'm essentially also gonna show you insert, update, delete, read, write, time travel, snapshot query, incremental queries, and then at the end is basically the schema evolution. So all of that is there in my Jupyter Notebook and I'm gonna run that um, on Glue, okay? So schema evolution is essentially basically, let's say you wanna add a new column or you wanna remove a column or you wanna rename a column or essentially you wanna rename a table of how to essentially do that. So I'll show you everything step by step with the uh, code snippets. So without wasting much of time, let's get started with the video. So the first step is very straightforward. Uh, you will have a Jupyter Notebook and uh, let's go to the AWS Management Console and head over to the Glue. Over here, please head over to the job section to do these uh, lab exercise with me, right? And then basically come here and click on Jupyter Notebooks and click on the upload button and then choose and then select your uh, notebook over here. I've already have a notebook. So I'm just gonna start the notebook over here, okay? So here you can see my notebook is starting and once my notebook is started, then we'll start performing operations such as insert, update, delete, read, write, incremental queries and time travel queries and schema evolution at the end. So if you directly want to go to the schema evolution, you may skip the first part and directly head over to that particular section. Okay. So once the notebook is ready, I'm going to resume it. All right, my notebook is here and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to run certain configuration on my notebook. I'm going to use the hoodie marketplace connector glue 3.0. I'm going to run this notebook in the US West 2 G1 X3 worker and I'm installing a Python library called Faker. Again, this Python library is just to generate some fake data and work with hoodie and I'm going to try to zoom in as much as possible. So the next step, if you come here, all the steps are given. We are going to do all these stuff. Okay. Um, insert, update, delete, read, write, incremental queries, time travel, hard deletes, uh, then schema evolution as well at the end, okay? So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a Spark session, um, again, so that, you know, um, I can start working with my Apache Huri. Here is a simple class that generates a fake data. So I wanna show you how the data frame looks like. So here I'm calling that class and then essentially I'm creating a Spark data frame and I'm doing dot show over here, which means this will essentially print um, the data frame on my console so I can show you what it looks like. And then basically we're gonna, you know, start performing our operations on our hoodie uh, tables. Again, very simple employee ID, employee name, department, state, city, salary, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So three records I have. I'm defining a database called hoodie DB and a table called hoodie table. Record key is a unique identifier in my data. It's employee ID. Precom key is something that you can use. Uh, Hudi will use that for the dedupe purposes, right? Uh, you can use anything. I'm just using a column called TS. It's just a timestamp, right? Um, here I'm using this following bucket uh, to essentially, you know, uh, uh, that, that's where my hoodie tables are gonna be in, okay? I'm performing an absurd operation and I'm using cow that is copy on write. So let's see. Now I'm going to write the data into the hoodie table. So here, if you see, I have a spark data frame. I'm converting back into a glue data frame and I'm using the glue marketplace connector to insert data into the hoodie tables. I'm going to run this cell. And once I um, execute this cell, what you will also observe is basically you will see some hoodie tables here, as you can see, hoodie, hoodie table. And then here you should uh, see your data files coming in pretty soon. Okay. Uh, I can also see that uh, a new database will be create, created. Um, so I think it's still um, executing. Yeah, now it's complete. So if I go to the glue and if I refresh over here, I should see a new database called HoodieDB and a table called Hoodie Table. I can come now and run ad hoc queries, right? I can essentially come here and say preview table. I can see all the data um, that makes sense. Now the next step is how to read data from hoodie. Again, uh, we are reading the data from our hoodie table. Pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm using the glue marketplace connector to the read data. And here you can see I'm doing dot show. So essentially I'm converting a glue data frame into a Apache hoodie data frame. And here you can see I have my hoodie, right? I have um, the three employees, employee zero, one and two, right? Three records so far, okay? 
Now this is the operation where we are appending into the data lake. So record number three and four is gonna be appended into the data lake, right? Same thing. Again, I'm making a Spark data frame. Let me zoom in. Oops, sorry. So here I'm creating a Spark data frame and I'm using um, glue to write data into my Hodi table. Okay. So I'm gonna run the cell and then again I'm reading the data over here. After writing, I'm reading. So now I should see two new records being appended of the data lake. Okay. So this is currently running. Now it is complete. And now if you observe carefully, zero, uh, one, uh, two, three, and four. So now I have four records, right? I have inserted two more records. Everything great, so far so great. And if I basically come to Athena, and if I try to run a preview table, I should see all the data coming in here as well. And sure enough, it does work, right? All these employees. Now let's see certain other action. I can update item on a data lake. Uh, there are several ways in which you can do that. So here I'm saying I want to update the record number three in my data lake, right? Uh, so I'm creating that into a Spark data frame, right? After creating into a Spark data frame, I'm essentially performing an absurd operation on the hoodie, and I'm essentially then reading it from the hoodie and printing it on the console. So you can see that. So now once I run this cell, um, you know, once the cell is complete. If I go to Athena or if I show you from the console, that particular record should be updated. And again, the entire notebook shall be there in the description. So you can actually download and try this out. Okay. So the cell is complete. And if you observe here, you can see this is an update on the data lake. So if I come to Athena now, if I refresh and if I try to do a preview table, sorry about the background noise. And sorry about the noise and here you can see the record number three this is an update on the data like absolutely great perfect okay so so far so good right now you can also use sql to query your hoodie right so i'm saying hoodie db dot hoodie table so select everything from the hoodie table where employee is three i can run this cell right and this should show me uh, that particular row again you can run your uh, sql commands as well uh, so here you can see that's the same record i was able to run that now Performing hard deletes is also equally easy. Uh, so here I'm using SQL to perform hard deletes. Uh, I'll try my best. So I'm saying select everything from a hoodie table where the employee ID is four. Currently on the data lake, I have, um, you know, employee number four. I'm essentially uh, grabbing that um, guy as a Spark data frame. And then basically here in the, uh, if you observe in the method, I'm providing it as a delete operator, which means now it's gonna go and delete from the data lake. And then again, after deleting, I'm reading the hoodie table. So when I run this cell, what is the expectation is basically, I, sh I should see that record uh, to be deleted, the employee number four. So if I, you know, go to Athena, once the cell is complete, I think it's done. Now, if you observe um, in the data lake, um, I don't have employee number four, right? I can actually confirm that. So maybe I can do a preview table again. And if you observe zero, one, two, three, four is gone. So that's great, right? We were able to delete stuff. So we were able to insert, append, delete, update, right? Uh, great, so far so great. Clustering and compaction. Um, so basically, uh, if you wanna convert a lot of files, so basically a lot of files, if you wanna compact them into less number of files, and if you only wanna keep the latest commit, you can essentially uh, perform a compaction operation, right? So over here, uh, Actually, I would love to show you uh, if I refresh the data like and you if you observe, I have certain files here, parquet files, right? So um, to perform that, um, again, there, there's a setting you can use. So here, if you observe, I am saying hoodie to keep the latest file version, right? So let me just show you by executing this cell um, simply. So I'm waiting for this cell to complete. So I'm reading and then again, performing the compaction. Um, so what I do expect is the number of files should be reduced. So I have seven files on my um, data lake right now, uh, about four parquet files, right? So the cell is complete. Now my expectation over here is I should see less number of files. And here you can see six number of files. It did do the job. That's great. Uh, performing time travel queries, you can say, okay, hoodie, give me, uh, give me all the data for, like, for example, 2022, uh, date 18, um, and the month as 12, right? You could essentially perform a time travel query, right? So let's try to execute the cell. I think today is 21st, uh, might not get the data here. 
Oh, that's good. I think I have some data there. So um, babe, uh, I was able to get data. So that's good. So here you can see I can perform time travel queries. You can provide the date um, component and you can query the data. Now performing incremental queries means uh, anytime new records are inserted, say you want to process incremental data, uh, right? Maybe you're reading, uh, you want to read incremental data and maybe you're inserting into Dynamo or other, other system, right? Doesn't matter. So that's the scenario. Here you can see I am essentially reading the data from the hoodie, right? And I'm essentially creating a view called hoodie snapshot, okay? And then here, essentially, uh, if you observe, after running the cell, I should not get any data, right? And now I'm gonna insert certain data, which means I'm simulating that new data has been added. And then when I run the incremental queries, I should only be able to see uh, the data that I recently inserted, right? So now basically same thing, I'm performing an append operation on the data lake, and then I'm again running my uh, incremental queries. So if I run this now, um, select everything from hoodie incremental so let's see what we get I've inserted record number six and seven so my anticipation is I should get six and seven uh, in my incremental query and sure enough that works so there is a, a peak view of hoodie incremental data processing right scheme evolution this is what the title was right so that is exactly what you want to learn right so schema evolution i'm gonna show you a very nice uh, use case here so here as you can see i'm gonna read from the hoodie and i'm essentially creating a snapshot okay so let me show you quickly and then i'm using spark.sql des descending hoodie snapshot dot show so what this does is basically if you observe this is gonna show me all the columns that i have and their appropriate data type right so here you can see uh, these are all the columns that I have their appropriate data type and can they be null or not right so basically showing me that right now let me show you stuff so here I'm basically showing you how to add a new column on existing hoodie table so here we are adding a new column okay you can do that through Athena as well but I'm gonna show you through Spark right now so here I'm defining my new schema and over here on this line if you observe my mouse I'm defining a column called new field and the data type I'm saying it's gonna be an integer. So I've defined my schema. I'm essentially inserting a new record and if you observe I am putting number 11 there and then I'm essentially writing into the Apache Huri uh, uh, tables. So what do I expect after this is basically once I inserted the data right now again I'm gonna create a snapshot right so I'm gonna read from my hoodie table and again perform the same query. So I should see, uh, as you can observe, a new field with the data type int has been added. I can see that over here, right? Now uh, you can query the data, you can query your snapshot as well. Now, the new field should be added on the data lake. Um, a little hard to see. Uh, over here, observe this one. If this is hard to see, I'll essentially show you on Athena. So I'm gonna refresh here. Come here, click on preview table. So if you see on the bottom section, if I scroll all the way towards the right and here you can see that's the record that we have added, right? A new column has been added called new field. Again, we were able to add a new column, right? Now, let me show you certain other things, right? That you might be interested in doing. Now, one of the common scenarios, and this is why Hoodie shines a lot, is basically changing data types. I have defined a column called new field and the data type is integer. Maybe I wanna change this to a long, for some reason right so hoodie does support that as well here is a chart that hoodie has given on their official website so here you can see if you have an integer you can convert that into a long you can convert into a float double string decimal you can't convert into a date that makes sense you can't convert an integer to a date right so so there's an n which means no so here are all the data types and they're supported converted data types which you can convert to right so i'm gonna show you a beautiful example um, that is um, over here if I show you so if you observe I'm defining a schema here and I'm saying the column that we had a new field I am saying I want to define this as a long type before it was an integer okay observe this carefully on this line over here it says it's an integer right as you can see here right now I'm trying to change the data type so here I'm defining that schema and I'm essentially here is my data and here I'm creating a spark data frame, right? It's a very simple stuff. I'm not doing anything complicated. This is how my spark data frame looks like. And now I'm inserting into my hoodie tables. Now again, I have defined this as a long, so it should basically do the conversion for me. At this point, I'm gonna run the cell. 
and then i'm going to read the uh, uh, read the data from the hori create a snapshot and then show the data type again so hopefully i should be able to show you quickly and if you observe carefully look at this uh, we change it to a long that is a big int here now right so previously we had that as a integer observe over here and now we are be able to change the data type so you see why hodi is shining so much now let me show you, show you how you can rename a table for certain use cases so i'm going to go to athena um, again i had to follow a slightly different approach from what was mentioned on the hori website uh, so i'll show you so say for some reason you want to change your table name right um, so how do you do that right so come to your athena and we want to run a ddl so over here in this one click on this three dots and click where it says generate dd table ddl come here and here you can see that's your uh, statement copy that notepad plus uh, plus so a different one a uh, little hard to see i'll try to see if i can expand this okay so over here if you can see uh, here is our column names are appropriate data type right and over here what you have is in the table properties number of files remove that okay and then uh, okay and then you can name it um, anything so let's say i want to name this table as an employees so what i'm going to do is basically now copy this open this on a new tab okay observe this here again one important thing to note here is we are not doing a cte a lot of people will think oh is he doing a cte i'm not doing a cte i'm essentially just creating a new table uh, it is still pointing to the same hodi location and i'll show you that okay let me show you so before that um, observe on my s3 um, observe sawmill dms learn uh, hori uh, hori table and then that's the that's the that's the location right when i'm creating a new table again it's just all i did is i just changed the name of the table over here and it is still pointing to the same location over here observe this carefully line 25 okay now uh let me go to athena i'll run this um, statement and here you can see query successful now i'm going to close everything okay now if you observe there's a table called employee right um employee i'm going to do a preview table and there you go same data so what is important here is basically uh uh if you do a cte you're essentially going to create a new table and then copy all the data from the old table to the new table we did not do that we essentially just um, you know uh created a new table and we're using the same s3 location right so now if needed you can essentially use this table um um uh um yeah use this table um so i hope this exercise would help you i hope this exercise was useful uh this exercise we essentially um performed insert update delete time travel queries incremental queries snapshot queries we did essentially uh, show you how to add a new column uh, into your existing hodi tables uh, how to change the data type as well how to change the table name and etc etc so this is a very nice demo where you got an overall idea about apache hodi and i hope you have enjoyed if you did enjoy the entire jupiter notebook with the code resources is on the github section if you have any question do not hesitate please comment on the video and if i know the answer i'll let you know if i don't know i'll ask someone and i'll let you know thank you so much for watching keep smiling keep programming let's make more and more um data lakes with apache hodi so making transactional data lakes right So thank you so much and I'll 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 basically see you in the upcoming next video okay